So why do we really need these custom code checks? Traditionally, all along, we've been uh, building a lot of uh, extra code on, on ECC on the ABAP. And it really helped us because we could uh, put things that were not available in S4, we could build, build it the way we wanted. The approach was good so far. But then the only downside comes when you have to do the conversion now. Because the underlying data structure on an ECC against what is on S4 is very different. But SAP has taken care to ensure that they keep this change minimal. So they have taken measures where they provide you things like CDS at the data to ensure that these data model changes make uh, that, that you have to make on your ABAP code is much lesser. But in spite of it, uh, there would be about a 20 to 30 percent uh, remediation that will have to be done on the ABAP code. So if that is not done, your existing uh, custom code might not, uh, might, would not work. So where are all these areas that uh, could get affected? Possibly in the material number field, the pricing, the key tables like BKPF, BSEG, MKP, MSEG tables and so on, where you've already used all this in your custom code. But but then when 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 you'll have to say, uh, uh, adapt so much of ABAP code, then it is only prudent that you first clean up your custom code. All of us know by experience that we would have developed so much code, but we're not using as much. So finally, what gets used in production is only a fraction of what really gets developed and moved to production. Therefore, we uh, recommend you to monitor your, monitor your system landscape for a long, longer period of time to do some housekeeping. And this can be accomplished by a couple of tools. One is the UPL, which is also called the usage procedure log in which you get the, which custom ABAP code objects are really used in your system can be, can be identified. And why is this important? One is you spend less effort in cleaning up this code. And number two, you can also prioritize your code. So which are the code that you're going, that are most used, get used, you attack them first. And then you have the SE mon, which collects the usage data on how often a specific ABAP code uh, object gets called. And it also gives you information about the calling business processes. So that, that really helps. And then you have the SAP solution managers, custom code lifecycle management. So which, which retrieves the usage data, and then it gives you a graphical presentation on how, how you could use, uh, how much of this uh, above code is used, and it helps you prioritize. Uh, from, from our learning experience earlier, we've realized that you should monitor your business processes for a longer period of time, and it should be on production. You'll have to turn on some uh, some, some logs, uh, some switches, key switches, so you know you, you start tracking them. So if you're not tracking them, you're not going to know uh, what is being used. And typically, if you can do this at least for a three-month period, then it really gives you the right statistics. It helps you clean up the custom code a, a lot better. So what, what is that that you, so once you've ident cleaned up and you've identified the list of custom objects that you're going to do, so what is that that you do? So there are two kinds of checks. One is the SAP HANA check. The other one is the S SAP S4 HANA checks. The SAP HANA checks is primarily because you moved from a non-HANA database to a, uh, to a HANA database. For those customers that are, are already on business suite on HANA, then this, this might not be applicable. So why is this required? because the S4 HANA is again, it's based on the HANA database and possibly in your uh, native SQL, you could have used the native SQL of the predecessor database. And these database vendor specific dependent dependencies must be eliminated. So that is why you have these called uh, SAP HANA checks. And another reason is possi possibly all these select statements that we have written without order by in assuming that the data in the database table is already sorted. So these are the things that you should look out for. And there are tools that help you find this information. Kturn does get you the code along with the, the number of places where these fixes will have to be done. And then you have the S4 HANA checks. So why do you do those? Those are primarily for, uh, you'll have to compare your existing code with the simplification database and see if a, a simplification item, uh, something that has been simplified is being called in your uh, ABAP code. So these two become critical 
and more more than uh, one uh, more cases the uh, the effort that goes in into cleaning up this uh, cleaning up and adapting this abap code is underestimated so based on the complexity of the abap code so i think as customers each of you know how complex your abap code is so depending on the complexity uh, you and on the assessment report you might want to start this sooner so that was the reason i said that if you start this sooner possibly on the on the sandbox system then it really helps you to uh, speed up uh, to get this done at the right time because you want to test this along with your other testing scenarios so it is really critical that this is started at well ahead of time for those customers that have extensive above coding